31, let's take a look at the three cases of absolute value equations and inequalities. So in section 2.6, we talked about case one. This is when you had an expression in an absolute value symbol with an equal sign, and you would set up two equivalent equations. You would say x was equal to k, or x was equal to negative k. If we wanted to graph the solution set, we would get two numbers, negative k and k, whatever those happen to be. And we could write them up in set notation. And when you just have two isolated numbers, you don't want all the numbers in between. I'm not shading everything in between here. We use these squiggles. You can see these are a little bit squiggly in terms of those that notation. It's not a parentheses. It's not a bracket. And we just say negative k comma k. So these are a list of our two numbers. It doesn't include everything in between them. Now I want to talk about case two. So case two, you have your absolute value expression isolated, but you have the less than symbol. When you have that version of the problem, you're going to set up a three-part inequality where x is wedged between negative k and k. All right, so if you have the less than symbol, this is your mechanics. Set up a three-part inequality. And it's a little hard to see this didn't photocopy or print out the best way, but you get a, an interval, at least if I graph it, it goes from negative k to k, and I would write that up in parentheses. Only parentheses because this, the way I wrote it here, it had the less than symbol. If this was less than or equal to, I would have used brackets here. So we'll just shade this part of the number line, and I want to go low to high, negative k to k. Now, when you have the greater than symbol, right, this is case three, when you have your absolute value expression isolated and you have the greater than symbol, you have to set up two separate inequalities. You have to say that x is greater than k or x is less than negative k. And the reason I, I look at this one first is because it, it follows what this, this initial inequality, equal, excuse me, inequality looks like, x greater than k. All right, it's just that I write it on the right side because this is technically gonna be the, the lower number. So you'll write x is greater than k or switch the direction of the inequality, x is less than negative k, all right? And when you do that, you're gonna get the two outsides of your number line. Again, this is a little hard to see. I would shade the right part of the number line and the left part of the number line. You can see that the middle is left out. The middle is the less than version. And then I have two intervals I need to write up. And so when I have two, because I have one here and one here, again, my low in this interval, negative infinity, negative k, both parentheses. And then here I'm gonna go po positive k to positive infinity, and that's where that second interval is coming from. All right, so with all of that, we're gonna start taking a look at these, and I'm gonna ask, does this feel like case one, case two, or case three? So example six says solve the inequality. So I've got my absolute value expression isolated in both of these cases, but you see I have less than here, greater than here. So this, I'm gonna call this a case two problem, and this is a case three problem. So in case two, I'm gonna use the equivalent form. I'm gonna wedge four X minus six between 10 and negative 10. And for case three, I'm gonna write two separate inequalities. I'm gonna write 4x minus six is greater than 10, or 4x minus six is less than negative 10. So let's play this out. I'm gonna scoot this up, but I'm gonna keep case two and three visible so I can reference back to them. All right, so let me get that up there, and then we can see all three of those cases. So here we go with case two. Again, the expression inside the absolute values is 4x minus six, and my k is 10. So I'm gonna do negative 10, 4x minus 6, 10. All right, I have now a three-part inequality where I can solve. I can add 6 to all sides, left, middle, and right. I'm going to get negative 4 is less than 4x is less than, it looks like, 16. Okay, great. I'm going to take this three-part inequality. I'm going to go ahead and divide all sides by 4. All right, and let me just move that up a bit. I, I will scooch it back down when we get to part B, but I, I wanna make sure you can see all of my work on this one. So when I divide everything by four, I'm looking at negative one 
is less than x is less than 4. I don't need to change the direction of the inequality because I divided by a positive number. Now, if I wanted to write this up on the number line, you can, all right, you don't have to. I'll show you what that would look like if I moved that, oops, excuse me, if I moved that, let me get this back in position. If I wanted to write this up on the number line, I'm just gonna do a, a little one here. All right, I'm gonna do negative one to four. They both have open dots and I would shade everything in the middle. So if I wanted to write this up as an inequality, or I'm sorry, not an inequality, an interval notation, I'm gonna say this is from negative one to four, right, low to high. And since I had open dots here, I'm gonna have open parentheses for my solution, okay? So there's a, a version of case two where we have our absolute value expression isolated and we have the less than symbol. All right, and when that happens, we're gonna get a low to high situation in terms of our answer, and it's gonna be the middle of some number line, and that's what I had here. I had negative one to positive four. All right, let's take a look at this third option. This is probably the more convoluted of them, so for case three, let me move this back down so we can get all of our cases in view. So for case three, if I'm taking a look at it, all right, I've got my absolute value expression isolated. I have a greater than symbol and it's 10. So I'm gonna do absolute value, excuse me, I'm gonna just do four X minus six greater than 10. That's one of my, uh, my inequalities. And then I'm gonna put the or here. All right, and then we need to do four X minus six. We need to change the direction and we need to change the sign. So either four X minus six is greater than 10 or 4x minus 6 is less than negative 10. And the reason I, I write this one over here is because this will produce the smaller number, typically. I mean, there could be dividing by negatives and things like that, but for the most part, that's how this is going to work out. So we're going to have here, I'm going to add 6. 4x will be less than negative 4, right? Or 4x will be greater than 16. So as I'm working on this, I'm gonna divide both sides by four. I'll get X is less than negative one or X is greater than four. If I wanted to write this up and graph it, let's graph it on the number line so we get some ideas to what we're talking about. All right, so I have negative one here, four here. So again, that, that's why I wrote this inequality over here. Even though it looks more directly like the original problem, right, four X minus six greater than 10, I put it off to the right because it's gonna produce the larger number. Right? Four is a larger number than negative one. So when you wanna write the second inequality, change the direction of the inequality and change the sign. So instead of greater than 10, I'll have less than negative 10. All right, so going through here, I have an open dot and an open dot, and I need to shade the right part of my number line here, but the left part of my number line here, right? So I'm getting the outsides. Oh, you can barely see that. Let me scooch that up. Sorry about that. Let me get that into view for us. All right. So here, again, I have the outsides of my number line where here I had the inside because this was the absolute value of 4x minus six was less than 10. This was greater than 10. So here I have two intervals. I'm going from negative infinity to negative one and then four to infinity. So I'm gonna write this up. All right, and I'll put my little therefore. We'll go negative infinity comma negative one. All right, infinities always get parentheses because this is open, I'll put a parentheses. We put the union symbol for the word or. So if you're using some, some interval notation, U swaps out with the word or. Low to high is four to infinity. Again, infinities always get parentheses. And then I'll put parentheses around that four because I have a strictly greater than symbol over here. Okay, now, if you get to the end of this and you're like, oh my, am I correct? Try a number. You can always guess and check and see if the, the number that you're guessing fits your solution. So try a number. What's a great number between negative one and four? I'll try three. So let's just guess and check with the number three. Well, what is four times three? It's 12. 12 minus six is six. The absolute value of six is six. Is six less than 10? It is, so I must have the correct 
interval, right? That, that's feeling good. And over here, try something between negative infinity and negative one. I'm going to do negative, I don't know, let's go with negative 10 today. So 4 times negative 10 is negative 40. Negative 40 minus 6 is negative 46. The absolute value of negative 46 is positive 46, and positive 46 is greater than 10. That's good. We want those numbers to work. What's a number uh, between 4 and infinity? I'll go with a more obvious one like 5, a smaller number. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 6 is 14. The absolute value of 14 is greater than 10, so that works as well. Right? So you can always guess and check just to make sure you got the right numbers or the right intervals. All right, so with that, we're going to practice a few more of these. We have six more we want to practice in example seven, and you're going to hear me refer back to, oops, let me get it into view. You're going to hear me refer back to on the next page, case one, case two, case three. So once I identify this is a case one, this is a case two, this is a case three, I'm going to set up my equivalent forms. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.